On today's menu, curdled milk with animal stomach enzymes. It's like sour and it smells like ass. Across the globe, what's delicious is questionable. Why would you eat that? Excuse me. Despite our differences, almost every nation on Earth took a look at a block of curdled milk treated with bacteria and coagulating stomach enzymes and said, Eh, yeah, I guess I eat that. Je vais manger ce que. Eh, comment dire ça? I think it smells like a foot, but I can't get enough of it. <laughs> I'm going to feed it to my baby. Many experts agree that the process of making it sprung up out of the nomadic tribes in what would now be Turkey, who used animal stomachs to store fresh milk and discovered that instead of going sour, the milk had curdled. And thus the earliest cheese was born. Yes, curdled milk and enzymes from animal stomachs equals delicious cheese. Archaeologists have found evidence of cheese in Mesopotamian ruins from 6000 BC. But cheese didn't hit the big time until the Romans came across it. And as the Romans conquered Europe, they spread cheese across it like it was a cracker. Soon after, each occupied country developed their own take on it, based on their country's unique climate, terrain, and available milk sources. There are a number of different ways to make cheese. We've come a long way since nomads and milk and animal stomachs. But good old tasteless American factory cheese that you get free from the government is made like this. To make a pound of cheese, you'll need 10 pounds of milk. And that milk must be heated or pasteurized to kill harmful microorganisms. After this, different kinds of bacteria are re-added that will determine the taste and texture of the finished product. The next addition is rennet, which is a collection of enzymes typically found in mammal stomachs. I'm not saying you should make human cheese, only that you could. Adding the rennet forces the milk solids, or curds, to separate from the whey, or liquid, and then you cook it. Softer cheeses are the result of large curds cooked at lower temperatures. Hard cheese is the result of smaller curds cooked at higher temperatures. Once the curds have reached their proper temperature and consistency, then they're pressed into their desired shape and allowed to age, where some cheeses get special treatment. France's Roquefort cheese is aged in specific moldy caves. Stilton has its crust pierced with rods to allow lines of mold to reach the core. And Kasu Marzu, aka maggot cheese, well that warranted its own episode of Why Would You Eat That? The average American eats over 30 pounds of cheese a year, which seems disgusting until you realize we're ranked 15th in the world. The world's number one per capita consumer of curds minus whey is Greece, who puts us to shame packing away nearly 70 pounds a year, which is well over a pound a week. Of course, when the American company SpaceX launched the world's first commercial spacecraft to reach orbit and return safely to Earth, hidden aboard was a secret wheel of, yup, cheese. In your mother face, Grease! Space cheese! Space cheese! Space cheese! Space cheese! Yes, but why would you eat that? While it probably began as a happy accident, Cheese was a way to store dairy for longer periods of time, without access to refrigeration. But doctors now recommend it as the best source of calcium. Except for cigarettes. Cigarettes have calcium, right? Cheese is high in calcium and protein, making it good for your bones, muscles, and chompers. It's also devastatingly good on nachos. You like cheese, don't you? Knock it off, Chris. In honor of National Cheese Day, this is Pick Your Cheese. Let's meet our contestants. Fearless Mike was born on the bayou under a bad sign. He's 31, owns two pairs of nunchucks, a pair for each hand, and loves things that are soft like kittens, puppies, and his neighbor's bathrobe. She was born a peach and she just keeps getting sweeter. She drives a white Jetta with a big old dent in the back because I don't check my mirrors while driving. Perfect, let's play. Tell them what they're gonna win, Chris. Well, you guys aren't gonna win anything, but you might lose something. Georgia, I hear you had a good Christmas in Mexico, am I right? Okay, if you happen to lose or get the least amount of actual correct answers as opposed to Mike, we're gonna have to take this picture and we're going to reference it anytime we use you <laughs> in any of the episodes here for. It's a fantastic picture. Michael, don't laugh too much, okay? Because... I think I know where this is going. Yeah.
No, the only no, thing the only thing that you're playing for is a cup of coffee. Seems pretty simple. The only thing that you have to do is you have to do it without your shirt on. You have to go get a cup of coffee out of the kitchen. Oh, boy. According to the BBC, this cheese was banned from public transportation because of its smell. But later, one of the cheese's producers said you could easily mask the smell by simply wrapping it in damp newspaper or cabbage. But I don't know anything about cheese. Mike, you've chosen Reblochon style plum. That is not correct. Oh, oh. man. Georgia, you chose Epoise. I'm sorry. You're going to have to watch Mike eat Epoise because that is absolutely No, correct. no way. <laughs> Good thing my cholesterol is. I would happily ride a bus with the whole load of that wrapped yeah. in cabbage. In the 16th century, this cheese became a fromage de devotion, or devotional cheese, because it was offered to the Carthusian monks. Monk cheese. We're looking for some monk cheese. Going to Saint Andre. As if she's going to re suddenly remember that she learned this in 16th century French class. You have chosen Saint Andre. I have. I really like that cheese a lot, but that is not correct. <laughs> oh, man. Georgia, you have chosen Sharf Max. That is also not correct. <laughs> the correct answer is Reblochon. Oh, that's for It was not, ew, ew, trash cheese. She proves. Mm -hmm. A survey by Britain's Cheese Board found that 75% of men and 85% of women reported experiencing weird and vivid dreams when eating this cheese before bedtime. I'm gonna go with the Gorgonzola. That's how I feel. The correct answer is Stilton. Ah! Sorry, that really? wasn't a choice that I gave you. <laughs> like blue cheese? No. Mm. Tastes a lot better than it smells, that's for sure. <laughs> it's like sour and it smells like ass. The first cheese France gave a protected designation to to help stave off imposters. Additionally, it's thrown into a cave with six to eight week old moldy bread crusts. Sorry, that's not correct. It's rock four again. Go! Oh, I feel like come you guys on! Learn that after yeah. that. <laughs> that one's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's aged. Mm. In the 16th you better century, you give me like a kitten at the end of this or something. Do you really want a cat as a present? Yeah, that's a lot be, of responsibility. It's a bow on a That'd be a creepy present. I know. This cheese is Truly's favorite. Is there an actual possible answer to this one? Oh yes, there is. It's not on here. I'm gonna go with that boss. Can we call your wife? We got a better idea. Let's call Ron Babcock. Babcock! From the Why Would You Eat That Challenge. Hey Ron, it's Truly from Why Would You Eat That. George is using you as uh, her lifeline. Quick, what's Truly's favorite cheese? Well, I mean, what's in it for me, Georgia? Yikes. And if you're willing to go for a sandwich, a good sandwich, not like a crappy one out of a vending machine, I'm talking from a food truck. Eight seconds. Eight, eight seconds! You have eight seconds! Can you give me a $10 sandwich? Yes! <laughs> I think that's correct. That is correct. It is not <laughs> cheese. Imagine. Congratulations, Georgia. You have won. I want a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Georgia, that means that this picture right here, we won't show on the internet. But so. you already did because he's pointing yeah, the camera. Yeah, because I want the picture. <laughs> Stop. Because I'm holding it right side up. So, Mike, whenever you want to pour yourself a cup of coffee shirtless, uh, I think that'll do it for us. Please disrobe now. <laughs> no way. Mike. No. Mike. 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 You Mike. drink my wine. Mike. You Mike. my cheese. Hey, Mike. Uh, you taught me up. For an episode about cheese, I think that cuts it. Click subscribe if you haven't. Enjoy National Cheese Day this Sunday the 20th. Follow Chris and I on Twitter and come back next week for a Why Would You Eat That episode you won't want to miss. Hint, it has claws. Also check out the Why Would You Eat That challenge. They're eating scorpion peppers this week. Bye bye Remember snake wine? Click here to watch the guys and girls at the Nerdist chug it down in a game of snake wine flip cup. Watch Spike Middleson get down in a rowdy Ravens tailgate. Then barbecue up a dish fit for a super Sunday. Miranda Singh stops by to give Noah some questionable advice on how to kick off a healthy 2013. Watch Kevin Gillespie hunt down a Kansas City monster. Burnt Finger Barbecue's four-pound bacon behemoth. Subscribe for more free tasted treats.